Hey guys, welcome back to PJs. Today I'm going to do a video, basically a checklist for you to go through when you're purchasing a Golf Mark 1. Bearing in mind that you're not going to buy a Golf Mark 1 these days through a dealership. That's very rare. You're going to buy it through a private individual. So you want to be prepared and you want to be informed. So in this video, I'm going to give you a bit of a checklist that you can go through when purchasing your potential Golf Mark 1 from a private individual. So basically what I'm going to cover is the body, the engine, the cooling system, the suspension and the interior. Just a few pointers on the most important uh, issues that you need to look at. Now one of the most um, common areas with a Mark 1 rust. So when you purchase your car, have a look at these posts. These posts, they always develop rust. And you can see mine has started a little bit here. But I've basically covered it because I'm going to be fixing that soon. And you will also find some rust developing here. So just keep your eyes open when, when you inspect the car that you want to buy. And also very commonly these gutters, they always seem to rust up. As you can see here, yeah, mine is also starting a little bit. But I've just covered it a bit with some protection until the time comes when I do it again. My paint is also starting to peel but let me tell you I've had this car now for 12 years and it's given me great service and this is the condition that it still is in at the moment. And also have a look in here see how solid and rust free the area is that is just under the rain tray. Have a look at that because if you have too much rust there you're gonna have rainwater getting onto the fuse box in the cabin. And then what you can do next um, go to the boot of your potential purchase and have a look at the carpet to see if there's any signs of rainwater leakage and stains because these cars they commonly leak in water through the lights and it comes into the boot and it settles onto the spare wheel and um, you can actually see if a car is letting rainwater in by the boot by checking on the mat and also you will get an odor and then also if you're able to get underneath the vehicle and have a look at the undercarriage. You don't want to buy a Mark 1 that has got a floor pan that's rusted away already. So get underneath and um, check it out. Um, surface rust like this here on the front suspension parts, that's, that's nothing. That can be um, done away with. It's just surface rust but more so there under your seats. That's where you don't want to have a weakness in the floor and then when you come to the engine check visually if you have oil leaks maybe a little but not excessive it normally comes from the tappet cover this area over here and that's not too serious then also go to your sump have a look at the sump as you can see there take your hand and do that and you'll be able to see if there's any oil coming out and also between your sump and your gearbox feel here because sometimes you can have a gearbox leak from here and you can also do a check by taking off the breather pipe have a look at the breather pipe you'll see some golfs they have excessive amount of oil coming out here and that would be a telltale sign of either compression rings or valve stem seals you can even go further and take out the air filter here and see if it's not um, soaked in oil. There should be a, f a little bit of oil but not excessively uh, large amount. Another tip is also to take off the oil cap, have a look at it and see if there's sludge buildup. It also gives you an idea of the engine and if the owner changed the oil regularly and you can also go to the dipstick have a look at the actual um, color of the oil on the dipstick it should be between you know like a light golden syrupy to brown the color um, mine is due for an oil change now I change mine every six months or 5,000 kilometers so have a look at the oil the oil will tell you a lot what's going on inside the engine and then you can also go to the actual exhaust just put your finger in like that and um, you'll be able to feel if that's oil it should be dry if there's oil coming at here then you know you have an issue with either the valve stem seals or the rings
Then you can basically just have a look at the condition and the cleanliness of the engine bay. Um, you can see if the owner has taken care of it or not. So those are all things you can see if the car has been cared for. And then you can also just check on the cooling system. You know, just by checking the pipes if they cracked and crunchy. And also you can check on the state of the filler bottle. Normally if they're brown and you can see that the engine hasn't been using um, coolant. The owner hasn't been using coolant on it, he's been using straight water. Anyway, my filler bottle is quite old so it doesn't look very smart. But um, I can assure you that it's definitely clean in the cooling system because I always um, flush regularly. But the telltale sign is a brown um, filler bottle. Okay, and then you can do a suspension check. Um, you can have a look at your CV joints first of all. You can see there that you shouldn't be having any grease and muck all around there. It should be nice and clean the boots. There we go. Your CV boots should just be nice and clean. No grease covered on them. That is the outer CV. And if you look further back, you'll see your steering rack boots. They should also be nice and clean. They shouldn't be torn. There you go. All nice and clean. No tears. And then visually as you're lying under the car, you can just check on things like your control arm for damage or for it being bent and things like that. And you're looking at your ball joints and all those other components that you can maybe spot that um, has a problem with it. And things such as your gear linkages and stuff like that. If you can sort of have an idea of the state of all these things when you're busy making a purchase, you know, you can... Put yourself in a good position when it comes to negotiation on the price and then you can also do an, an upholstery check just to check uh, if the upholstery is in a fair condition and also your carpet um, if there's any tears and stuff like that maybe just needs a bit of cleaning steam cleaning that's not a big issue but generally you want a vehicle with a reasonably good upholstery and then you can proceed to start the vehicle up Listen to the engine, if it's not making excessively loud noises, take it for a spin, drive it for a bit, check if the car performs well, the alignment, there's no noises, no vibrations, no shaking, no pulling to the one side.